Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. Now this is going to be a quick overclocking guide for the GTX 980. You can also use this for the GTX 970 as they are pretty much the same card and they use the same architecture. Now the first thing you're going to need is MSI Afterburner, preferably the latest version and at the time of making this video that would be version 4.10. If you're watching this video into the future then there should be an updated version probably and that will also work so you don't need to worry about using this specific version um, the next piece of software I would recommend you download and if you haven't already got it is GPU Z now this small program tells you everything you need to know about your graphics card your default clock speed, your memory speed and your boost clock and it's just a good tool to have to verify the clock settings that you've input are actually registered on your card and you'll also need something to test ability ultimately playing a game is the best way but for the instances of just trying to find your maximum core clock and memory clock um, and recording performance to see if you're actually gaining performance or losing it I would recommend using 3D Mark 11 and Unigen Heaven or Unigen Valley. Okay, one thing I want to just say now um, overclocking can damage your graphics cards, and every, um, every graphics card does overclock a little different than um, another. Like, they all have individual basically um, potentials. So, one card might do a maximum of 1300 megahertz on the core while someone else's with the same card may do 1400 it's just the way it is it, we call it the silicon lottery now the first thing you want to do is increase your power limit to 125 percent if you are using a GTX 970 you may not be as high because it's a different card it might be something like 113 but just generally max out that slider because this will stop your graphics card from throttling and basically give you the best chance of maintaining your stable overclock if you click the drop down arrow it allows you to prioritize your TDP to 125 before it once it reaches 125 it, it will start backing off and reducing the clock speeds or you can also allow it to basically run at maximum clocks until it reaches your maximum temperature which is 91 celsius so it's up to you which one you want to use i generally use my tdp as my priority you're probably looking at core voltage and wondering why is this not adjustable well when it comes to overclocking generally um when you adjust your core voltage that's when you can damage your card but you do generally need voltage if you want to run extreme overclocks and if you do wish to do that just click settings check this box called unlock voltage control click OK MSI Afterburner will ask you do you want to restart the program you click yes you give it a moment or two reopen the program and you now have control over your voltage um, if you're new to overclocking I generally wouldn't recommend adjusting the voltage until you get a little bit more comfortable with what your card can do and with overclocking in general so we're going to leave this at zero for now and just overclock without adding any voltage so we've increased our power limit to the maximum you can which was the first step now we're going to move on to overclocking our core clock I recommend overclocking your core clock by increments of 25 so for the start I'll increase my core clock by 25 megahertz now have GPU Z open as well just to make sure that these core clocks have been adjusted so as you can see my default is 1165 megahertz once I click apply that should change so now that's moved up to 1190 megahertz I now know that my core clock has been adjusted so we want to make sure that that clock is stable 
So the first thing I'll do is run 3D Mark 11. This is a very, very small benchmark, a very short benchmark. It's not very, very stressful, but it's a good indication of if your card is um, stable and it will easily show artifacts as well because of the nature of the test. The first two graphical scenes are in very low resolution and it's pretty much all blue. So if you have any artifacts or graphical anomalies, they'll be very, very visible. Whereas in some games at high resolutions, it might not be as visible, which is why I use this. Just click run. You can either run the extreme preset or the performance preset. It depends. It's up to you, your personal preference. If you complete the test, then your card is pretty much stable for the moment and you can then increase your core clocks a little higher so I already know my maximum so I'm just gonna increase it to that which would be 165 so once you find your maximum core clock you can now move on to your memory some people will do this at the same time but the reason I don't recommend doing that is here's an example say you have a maximum core clock of 180 but you also have a maximum memory clock of let's say 150 if you're adjusting both core clocks at the same time and memory clock at the same time one of these are gonna crash your graphics card and you need to know which one it was and you also need to know what your maximum clocks are before crashing so this is why I recommend you do them individually because you wouldn't know that your core clock could reach 180 because your memory is already crashing you at 150 so it's always good to do these separately so you know what your car can do on each clock I've already done all the hard work and I know my maximum is 300 so with no voltage these are my maximum core and memory clocks I'll just show you GPU Z just to confirm what clocks I'm running right now so as you can see now from my default core clock I've gone up to 1330 MHz on the core clock my default memory was 1753 megahertz that's now 1903 megahertz my boost clock has also increased all the way to 1431 megahertz another thing with the boost clock your boost clock may say 1431 megahertz but that's generally the minimum boost you will get you'll find when you're in games you actually get um, a higher boost clock than that so don't be surprised if you you have a higher um, boost clock that's just just how the way it works um, the boost clock is always a little bit higher than what GPU-Z will report so that's pretty much the first step if you've found your maximum core clock and maximum memory clock using Unigine Heaven I mean using um, 3D Mark 11 you can now move on to something a bit more strenuous like Unigine Valley I recommend just using the Extreme HD preset that runs at 1080p with 8 times anti-aliasing anti and it will generally give your card a good workout so I'll run the benchmark and show you how it looks in game So as you can see here, I'm getting 1507 megahertz on my core clock and that is my stable overclock with no voltage. If you're wondering what all of this is, this is MSI Afterburners on-screen display. Um, it's very helpful when you want to see what your in-game um, clock speeds are and this is pretty much a live GPU statistics. I do have a different tutorial if you want to know how to set it up to look similar like this, similar to this, so I'll give you a link to that if you really want to know. 
and that's pretty much it you click run benchmark or just hit F9 and it will do go through an 18 step process while stressing your card and if you get through that you generally have a very great chance of having a stable overclock I'll speed up this test now obviously for the interest of time and I'll present you with the results at the end So there you go guys, that's pretty much what the test looks like. Once you complete this test, you can just close the program and continue to overclock if you feel that you can get a bit more out of your graphics card. If you're happy with the core clocks and memory clocks, um, you can push higher by increasing voltage. Um, if I want to take my card uh, one step further, I generally will adjust my voltage and add about 45 voltage to my overclock. Um, that kind of gives me greater stability so I can increase the, the core clock as well and that with the extra voltage it does give you a bit more of a stable boost as well and I can also increase my, me my memory clock by another 30 megahertz. So that is pretty much my maximum if you are having heat issues you can create a more aggressive fan profile if you wish um, just click settings and click fan and you will have a graph like this basically showing you your max temperature and your max fan speed and you can customize this to the way you want so if I was going to make a custom fan curve between 40 and 50 Celsius I wouldn't want my graphics card running over 35 percent fans and between 50 and 80 degrees I'd want a maximum fan speed of probably 65 percent as a maximum if you just click delete here it will get rid of what's remaining and that's a custom fan curve and this will help keep your temperature under control a little better than your stock um, fan profile also make sure you click user defined and it will glow up green that means your custom fan profile is active so that's pretty much it for my overclocking tutorial if have any questions just message me and I'll try to help you out anyway that's enough for me thanks for watching guys